great to be here. My name is Daniel. I'm the CEO and uh, one of the co-founders of our card. Uh, I wanted to start about telling you about my day last Thursday, actually, which uh, started off as a quite regular day. I uh, woke up around 7, brushed my teeth, took a shower, uh, did some messaging, dropped my kids off at school, and uh, got to work around 9-ish, did some emails, read some articles. Uh, around noon time, I remembered I forgot to order uh, a place for us for the weekend, for the family, so I went on booking.com and got a bed and breakfast. Uh, up till here, a pretty regular morning, you would agree. Uh, and the interesting part about this morning is that, as you can see, practically everything that I've done uh, on that day has been mapped by some kind of digital service and will obviously be used to segment me, retarget me, etc. cetera. The, the, the booking.com room I was looking for, the articles, etc. cetera. But the day, become more, the day became more interesting in the afternoon when I left work and I went to the supermarket. And at that point, I entered the store, spent about an hour there, and emerged with my shopping and went back home. The reason this is interesting is because 94% of retail purchases happen actually in store. And this is in, in, in I would say, in kind of a, a vast comparison to what I did up until that point of the day. There's practically perfect mapping of everything I'm doing in the digital world, but there's practically zero information about my activity in store. And this is, this is a huge gap. And it creates kind of a funny situation. So on the one hand, you have 6% of purchases with near, near perfect data, and you have 94% of purchases with practically zero data. Who has this information? The retailers, obviously. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, they're not too keen on sharing that information for obvious reasons. And apart from very singular cases, most of them simply don't give any access to this kind of information. So what we need to do is we need to collect that information directly from the consumer himself. And how do we do that? We employ a receipt capture. The flow is pretty simple. Every time the consumer buys something, they get a receipt, they upload the picture of a receipt, and they get some kind of reward for that. Now, why did we choose this methodology of collecting the information directly from the consumer? For a few reasons. First of all, it's easy. They can take a snapshot of the receipt. It's one click, and they share a lot of information. Secondly, in the physical world, practically everything that you do will give you a receipt in the end. So it's one single methodology where you can collect a lot of different verticals. If it's a restaurant or a, a grocery store, it doesn't matter. It all works the same. And least, uh, uh, last but not least is that the information on the receipt is very granular. So you have SKU level purchase data. Uh, you have the location of the purchase, the time. So you have a lot of very, very rich information there, which is relatively easy to acquire. Uh, our card is providing the uh, leading technological platform for collecting receipt and analyzing and interpreting the information inside this receipt. We have clients uh, in Europe and in the USA. Um, I'd like to share uh, a couple of case studies from our clients and from the verticals uh, that we work in. So the first, uh, the first vertical, uh, by the way, we typically, so we license the, the, we license the technology. We don't collect the data ourselves, but we license the technology and white label it to the, to the players that do. Uh, so the first vertical is market research companies. Uh, typically, they're running consumer panels and they're collecting this kind of information. Uh, this specific case study is something we're doing with Nielsen in the UK. This is a mobile consumer, receipt-based consumer panel that we're running for them. Uh, traditionally, this uh, used to be collected manually, so people would go uh, to parking lots of grocery stores and try to collect receipts. Um, it's a relatively small panel, generating over 100,000 receipts per month, so it's very, very successful in collecting high volumes of data for relatively low cost. Uh, apart from the low cost, the, the data that's collected is actually better than uh, traditional, some of you might know, home scan and, and kind of barcode scan flows where the barcodes are scanned, there's much richer information here. There's pricing, there's quantities, there's, so it's really a win-win, lower cost and higher value uh, data that's coming in. Uh, the second segment we're catering for, uh, which has actually the, the biggest kind of, uh, of growth potential, is in, uh, is in the field of, of cashbacks. Uh, in the U.S., 
as you know, couponing is is huge billion dollar billion dollar industry, and most of it is still based on on paper coupons and and coupons that you need to print and physically bring with you to the store. Uh, this is obviously going to die. Nobody can imagine, like within 10 years' time, that people will still be doing that. One of the emerging solutions, which looks uh, the most promising is, is cashback. So the way it works is instead of bringing a coupon to the supermarket, you simply buy the product, and when you take a snapshot of the receipt, you can get a cashback on that. So you get the discount after you shop, but the big advantage is that the retailers are not part of this. So for a manufacturer, so for Unilever, for any CPG, they can reach out directly to people, uh, give the promotions. Um, so in the US, we're working with Shopkick. It's one of the leading consumer apps. Uh, they typically have beacons in store, but they're doing cashback. And uh, for us, at least for the company, uh, there's a huge growth potential there. We're, we're practically today piloting with all the big uh, cashback players in the USA. Uh, so to summarize, uh, my points are, first of all, there's a huge gap in terms of brick and mortar, uh, physical, life scenario data. Uh, practically no information on that, although it's most of the purchases. Uh, the only way to really go and get that data is to collect it directly from the consumers. We think that receipts is the best kind of method to do it in ways of the, the, the richness of the data and uh, the scalability and the cost effectiveness of it. And as our card, as, uh, as, as our vision really is to be the, the, leading, the leading provider of this service, but I would say the kind of the next step and, and the real vision is once we aggregate uh, consumer data, brick and mortar consumer data from all of these players, um, the, the, the next step is, is kind of a, an additional business model where we can help our clients monetize on that information just because of the scale of being able to sit on a, on a big pile of, uh, of brick and mortar data, plug that into DMPs, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. All right, let's jump into questions. Uh, so I'm just wondering how you're thinking about the distribution of your technology, given that consumers are unlikely to want to scan their receipt multiple times. Yeah, it's a great question, so... Yeah, trying to use the mic. Oh, sorry. Uh, great question. So you're right. I mean, right now it's starting off, so it's just not really a problem yet. Uh, there's, not that many, there's not that many services, but definitely down the road at least, uh, we've, we've encountered this issue in a, in a CPG scenario. So we're working with, uh, with publicists on a, on a CPG brand loyalty program where, it, where it's based on receipts, so every time the consumer buy. And there it's, it's obviously you don't want to have like 10 different apps of 10 different uh, CPG brands on your phones. And the, the way we see it going, and this is, by the way, also something in our roadmap, is that there's going to be a convergence so you'll have uh, like something that kind of aggregates different loyalty programs. So uh, things uh, like, you know, you have loyalty cards or, or, or things where you, you can aggregate really and, and earn points from multiple sources. So, but obviously you, first of all, you know, you need the different, uh, the different players to be there. And the next step is that you start to aggregate that. Cool. Great. And now let's uh, hear from our marketeer from BNP Paribas. Yoni. Hi, Daniel. Um, it's a really impressive um, solution. Um, I, I would like just to, to share with, with, with you, uh, and I have just one question. How many people uh, here uh, in the audience um, check uh, regularly each month their bills or their account statement when you receive it from banks? Okay, great. I, I'm not alone in this uh, uh, here. Um, I, Daniel, I, I, I guess that um, your solution beyond um, CPG, uh, which is an excellent uh, application in industry, uh, regarding uh, institution, financial institution, um, you could make a sort of pivot, pivot or um, to um, try to imagine that personal finance
finance solutions, personal finance business lines inside financial institutions could use uh, your solution to uh, capture the data or, or to capture the greed charges, because as you know, uh, greed charges in US represent um, um, 14 uh, billion, uh, more or less, uh, dollars. Um, so greed charges related to the credit and, and debit uh, uh, cardholders. So it, that's my, my point uh, concerning you. Uh, beyond your, your, your application, it could be interesting to, to have it in mind. Um, yeah, I, I can say a word about that uh, because the, 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 the whole expense management and uh, it's something we've obviously uh, looked at. Uh, I would say that the reason why we're not there um, is because from an from a expense management uh, point of view, the data that the credit card company has is typically enough. So I can, I can see how much I'm spending on grocery, on insurance, on travel. The differentiation in our data is really the, 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 the SKU level, the product level data. So which products have I bought at the grocery store or which, uh, which items I've ordered at the restaurant or things like that. Um, so, so I would say that's why that's where we see our, our competitive advantage more in, in you know that kind of space than the expense management. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel.